Dr. Zaki, could you furthermore explain then what are the particular conditions that make zakah or zakat an obligation upon the Muslim? Zakat is compulsory on every Muslim, irrespective whether it's a man or a woman, whether adult or minor, whether sane or insane, as long as he's a free citizen. And he has surplus wealth or savings which has reached the nisab level or above it. And he has that wealth or surplus amount of saving for one complete hijri year or lunar year. Then zakat becomes compulsory on that particular Muslim. And most of the time, the most of the cases, it is 2.5%. So basically, there are a few conditions required. Number one, that person should be a Muslim, irrespective of the male, female, young, old, sane, insane. It doesn't matter, a Muslim. Number two, he should be a free citizen. Number three, he should be a sahib e nisab. That means he should be the sole owner of that surplus wealth. Above the basic requirement, whatever savings he has got, whatever surplus he has got, he should be the sole owner of it. It should not belong to somebody else. And it should be with him for one complete lunar year or hijri year. As it's mentioned in the Hadith of Tirmidhi, Hadith number 61, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that zakat is payable on the property, but natural, which is surplus on the wealth, which a person possesses and has with him for one year. And the last criteria is that zakat should be paid from lawful earnings. It should be from halal earnings. As the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sunnah Nisai, Hadith number 2525, where the beloved Prophet said that prayer without cleanliness is not accepted. Same, zakat without lawful earnings is not accepted. So zakat that you give should be from lawful earnings. That is a requirement. And if it's a minor or if it's an insane person, the person who's the guardian of the wealth of that insane person or the minor person, he should pay zakat on behalf of that insane or minor person from his wealth. I see. Dr. Zakir, you mentioned the term nisab. Could you explain to the viewers what the term means? And furthermore, the understanding is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only made zakat incumbent upon the person who has reached the nisab level. Could you also explain what is the implications of that? As far as the word nisab is concerned, nisab is an amount laid down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the minimum amount that when it reaches, and it keeps on changing on different properties. When it reaches that level on which zakat is compulsory, then that minimum limit is called as the nisab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it compulsory that zakat should be given only when a person reaches nisab is for many reasons. Number one, those people who are poor, they will not be unnecessarily taxed with it with the zakat. And furthermore, those who are rich will surely have to pay the zakat from their surplus wealth. Secondly, it is an insurance against those countries who want to levy a tax on the needy and the poor. So nisab has been laid down. That means they cannot tax a person who is below the nisab level. So it is insurance against those countries who want to levy a tax on the needy and the poor. Furthermore, a person who wants to know whether he should pay zakat or not. So if he knows his surplus wealth, his excess wealth, has reached the nisab level, he knows that he has to pay. As far as the person who is rich, for him, if he is wealthy, so all the excess wealth but natural is liable for zakat. Nisab has got two requirements. Number one, that it should be above the basic requirements, known as fadil, above the requirement of human being. So it is besides the clothing, shelter, lodging, boarding, all the basic requirements of human being. If he has surplus wealth or saving, then if he reaches nisab level, then that is counted for zakat. And what is the basic requirement depends upon the Islamic Sharia. 
because if we see today many of the modern countries, for their basic requirement may be luxury, for them basic requirement may be a very big car or a big mansion, maybe excessive food, maybe alcohol, whatever it is. So it should be according to the Islamic guidelines. And we are not bothered what does the UNO tell us or the International Monetary Fund tells us or what the security social company tells us that what is the basic requirement. It is according to the Islamic guidelines, which is mentioned in the Hadith, etc. If it is above that, then if it reaches the sub level, then zakat has to be given. And secondly, it should be with the person for one full year. As I mentioned earlier, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in the Hadith of Tirmidhi, Hadith number 631, the Prophet said that anyone who possesses wealth with him, a property, but natural, reaching the Nisab level, that surplus wealth, for one full year in his position, then he should pay zakat on it. There is an exception to this rule for farm products, as Allah says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 141, that give what is due according to what is proper on the day of harvest. Because if it's harvest, farm products, give it on the same day. You don't have to wait for one year. And according to Imam Abadi, he says there are two types of zakat. One type of zakat is on that goods which cannot be invested. It remains the same, talking about farm products. And that you have to give immediately. And that which can be invested with the gold, silver, merchandise. So it has to be with you in position for one year. And after it's in position for one year, above the nisab level, then you have to give zakat. 